We had a powder contamination issue come up today in the middle of a long production run. So for us, a big production run is around like 200 pounds of powder. We spray out of boxes, out of a box fed gun. So 200 pounds of powder, usually four 50 pound boxes. And it's possible for that to be in different batches or different lots. What do I mean by that? When powder is made at the manufacturer, they make it in separate runs. So if we order this powder at different periods of time of the year or different months to month, then we could end up with 200 pounds here at Kaiser that is not all in the same batch. So we started spraying a long production run out of a couple boxes. Everything was going good. Those boxes ran low. We needed to change out. We got new boxes out. Our process when we get out new boxes is to check to make sure that powder's good before we start spraying parts and then have a ton of parts come out bad. So we spray sample panels and we noticed that there were some issues with this powder that was coming out of the new boxes. It was a different batch than what we had sprayed earlier in the morning. So we stopped, tried to figure it out. Luckily we had some other powder and we tested it, it was good and we were able to keep on going with production and we quarantined some of the powder off to the side that we thought that there could be issues with. So I'm just gonna walk through how we diagnose that and what we're gonna do to ultimately resolve the issue. So when we got out those new boxes of powder, because we were running low and we realized that the new boxes of, of powder were out of a new batch, we sprayed a sample panel just like this. And if you'll notice, kind of right down by my pinky, there's some extra like debris or clumping. This is a fine texture powder to begin with, but um, kind of up here by my thumb, the texture is pretty consistent, not very pronounced, which is what the customer wants. Down here by my pinky, definitely more texture going on there. Could be something wrong with the powder. So we saw that on a panel. So first of all, we just assume that something wrong with what we're doing, we spray another panel. Maybe the panel that we sprayed had debris on it. And we find that it came out even worse on the second panel. So we're thinking, man, there's probably something wrong with this powder started spraying multiple panels. I'm not going to go through them all here, but here's when we think that there's an issue, then we grab even a larger panel. So this one's almost twice the size and we still see that issue where here, kind of down here at the bottom, there's a lot of extra texture up here at the top, not so much. Okay. So when we see that issue on sample panels, then what's our next step? So we're all about keeping production going. Uh, that sample panel process happens very quickly. We get them sprayed, we look at them. If we think there's an issue, we just set that powder off to the side. Luckily, we had more powder here in the same color, same manufacturer, and it was out of a different batch. We sprayed panels out of that, looked fine. We kept on going with production. Typically, production just keeps going. I get notified about the issue, and then I'll investigate further, which is kind of what I'm doing now. So after I see those panels that we just looked at, then my next thing is, is I need to go to the boxes of powder that we think the issue is and start gathering some information. So I'm in our powder room here. What I am looking for when I'm looking at a box of powder to get some information off it and, and see what batch or lot it came out of. You can see right here, there's a lot number sometimes on other uh, products. It'll say batch number, but I got a lot number here. I got a lot number here. These are two separate 50 pound boxes. So we got 100 pounds out of the same lot. There is also a box number on these. So this is 119, the other one was 120. So essentially I take that information, I have the lot number, I have the box numbers, and I can talk with a technical rep or a sales rep at the powder company, and then they can help figure out the issue. A lot of the time, they just want you to quarantine that powder, send that powder back to them so they can look it over and uh, see if they agree with you. I would just say most of the time their initial reaction is that their powder is good and they're thinking that there's something wrong with our process, which I don't blame them. So that's why um, we try to take the time, get all the information we can, get pictures of sample panels, and if possible, we try to compare it to other powder we're spraying. In this particular instance, we are spraying just fine, parts are coming out good switch to a different batch of powder, parts are coming out bad now, or luckily we stopped it before that happened. Every once in a while we will spray some of the production parts in the run with the powder that we think is bad, so we have an absolute direct comparison. We didn't today because we didn't want to force any rework that we didn't need to do. 
Um, but then there's a direct comparison like, hey, only thing we changed was the box of powder and now parts are coming out bad. And all that information helps your powder rep kind of be on your side and then they know you've done your due diligence. Basically, I try to blame ourselves for a powder contamination issue first and try to eliminate all the possibilities and then resort to, well, maybe there's something wrong with this powder. But it's really quick and easy and you can prevent yourself from a lot of rework if you just have some of sample panels. You can buy those off the internet. They could be steel or aluminum. They're just nice, clean, raw panels. You can just have those sitting around. When you got a new box of powder, spray it real quick, get it in the oven, look at it. If it looks fine, continue on. If it doesn't look right, investigate it some more, spray some more panels. If it still doesn't look right, set that powder off to the side, get a different box of powder out, so then you can hopefully just keep on spraying without any issues.